Hi, I'm Scotty. I service, repair and restore vintage and antique mechanical clocks. Welcome to Scotty's Clock World. Today's service and repair is an Ergos Art Deco metal clock. As you can see, the case is pretty shot down around here and here and at the back of it down the base pieces lifting up all over the place it doesn't matter particularly we're going to junk the case it's of no consequence I'll attempt to marry the movement up to a different case once it's finished that's the movement in there You'll see there's no pendulum on the movement. Once we get the movement stripped down and cleaned, I'll show you how to work out the pendulum length so that you'll know how to do it if you haven't got a pendulum uh, with, with a clock. Okay, first thing we'll do is we've got to take the hands off. So we'll lay that down there. Open the face. Undo the nut, which happens to be pretty tight. Loosen it off a bit. Take the nut off. Put it aside. Thumbnails under the minute hand. Okay, it's a little bit tight. We'll have to put a hand puller on it. This is a hand puller we'll use. Slide it over the top of the minute hand so it catches underneath. And then we just turn the nut down. And it very gently removes the minute hand. Now we should be able to remove the hour hand easily without using the, the pull up. Hmm, it's a bit tight. So we'll put the puller on it. Wind it up so it fits. Then start winding it down. The hand will come off very easily. There we go. That's the hour hand. Now we'll leave the chapter ring, got it, etc. on the front. We'll go around to the back. We're going to remove the movement. First thing we'll do, I'll lift that up a bit so you can see. We're going to take out the coil gong. It has a nut on the bottom of the base which we'll loosen up. Hold that up a little bit. Unscrew the nut, take the washer off, and remove the gong. That's the gong unit. Over there. Now we're going to remove the movement. And I'll do that off camera because you're not going to be able to see inside the case. There's the movement we've removed from the case. 
take the screws out, put them aside. That's the front of the movement. That's the back of the movement. We're now going to take the movement to pieces, and put it through the ultrasonic cleaner, clean it up, see what rebushing we have to do, and after that I'll show you how to calculate the length of the pendulum. Before we start to take the movement apart, we have to let down the main springs. We'll be using a let down tool a standard medium sized screwdriver. Pop the tool over the winding arbor, press down and wind it up slightly. Then place the screwdriver under the click and let the let down tool slide slowly around in your hand so it doesn't spin. Right, now the other one. Same thing again, wind it up a tiny little bit, release the tension on the click and let the spring wind down. Not quite there yet. There we go. Take that off. Now that we've let the tension out of the mainspring, we can now start to take the movement to pieces. We'll start off by removing the rack. We can get that out without losing it, hopefully. There we go. Tweezers. Got him. Put him aside, slide the rack off, now we'll slide this off. We get it to line up and see if we can push it out. Here we go. Move that. Sir clip, we'll have to flatten that before we put it back on. We can now take off the snail, which is that part there. Remove this wheel while lifting it up. That is the spring. There, that keeps tension on both the clicks. You lift that up, see if it's, it's clipped on the other side. All right, we'll leave that there for the moment. That one, that one. They're on the strike side of the movement, which is there. So they go into the strike 
tray that we've got. That will lift the entire barrel out. Right, do the other side. A bit of a tighter fit that one. Gee, that's been screwed in well and truly. So going side. Now we'll take these off. No tapered pins on this, they're all little circlips. And that lever then pulls straight out. That will not quite come up high enough. All right. Not a problem. We'll loosen that off. Here's our little multi. Our little shifter. Actually, we'll have a look and see. Seven, we want about eight mil, I reckon. Eight mil's too big. Seven mil is the right size, so we'll start doing the nuts, loosening them off. Two. That's the fourth one. We'll remove the rust from those hangers before we put them back on again. Well, we'll remove them all now. Nuts in there. They can go over there. Come on. Come on. Turn him around, another one to go. Three of them, last one coming up. Four. Okay. Now that looks, looks all right. Actually what we'll do, before we take the place apart, We'll remove the hammer, which has got a, a tapered pin in it. Pull that out. Prise the pin off the top. It's a bit tight. It is tight. Dear, oh dear. All right. We'll look at that in a minute. Remove the back cock. It's a bigger screwdriver. 
back cock is that this piece here that holds the suspension spring which is broken there we'll put a new one of those in dear oh dear that has been cranked on We'll take that off we'll very carefully. Take the pallets off. We'll have another go at the hammer once we've released the rest of it. Now very carefully because there may be a little bit of tension lift there is to lift the top plate off very very carefully actually what we do first is we'll remove going side spring The strike train spring. We'll take them out, clean the springs, grease them, put them back in after the barrels have been cleaned. What we'll do is remove it from this side. Get rid of that. Take that out. And I'll rebuild all this again so we know where the wheels go. Then I'll come back and we'll pick up where we were. We'll take the strike train mainspring out first. We'll pop the cap off. Some of them are a bit tight, so be a bit careful with it. Almost there. Then that's how it's got him. Cap off. Now we put the winding arbor into the chuck. find a sleeve that's going to fit too small that's the sleeve we want just fits neatly over put that onto the winding tool lock down the Make sure we're winding in the right direction. Which is there. Put the winder together. Put on a nice thick leather glove. If, it's, if the barrel slips it's seriously going to make a bit of a mess of your hand. Now you'll notice on there, if I turn it you will, just there, 
is the lug that the mainspring catches on. What we have to do is line that up with that slot in the sleeve. So we'll hold that up there. We'll wind up the spring till it's tight. Then we'll slide the sleeve a bit more into the barrel so that it lines up with that lug and then we'll turn it a bit extra to the left so it's nice and tight. Then we'll reverse the flow of the winder and let it come down. Undo the chuck on the winder. Now we should be able to remove relatively easily the spring from the barrel. That's got him. Finally it's come out. We'll have to flatten that before we put it back in. That's probably what's catching it, I would think. Put the winding arbor back in. the sleeve off, reverse the flow of the spring binder and slowly let the spring down. There we have. I'll leave the main spring on the spring binder while I'm cleaning it. It helps to stabilize it a bit. What we want now Some blue Kero, a little piece of scouring pad, put the pad over the spring, twist it over so that it covers both sides and then slowly work your way up the spring with the Kero and the scouring pad and you'll see the gunk that comes off in a minute. about as far as we can go. We'll work back down again. Right. Clean piece of cloth. We'll work our way up the mainspring and then down again to dry it and remove the caro. And the old oil and dirt and muck that is on it. Change the rag round a bit, come down again. To dry it off. That's the cloth. You can see the gunk we've got off the spring. Now, another clean piece of cloth. We'll do the same thing again to make sure it's completely free of Kero. Wipe it up. And then back down again. It's 
pretty clean. Now remove the spring from the spring winder because we're going to grease it now. This is the grease we're going to use to grease the spring. I use a toothpick. I'm starting from the inside, run some grease around one side of the spring. You don't need to do it both sides because as the spring compresses, the grease will be transferred to the other side of the spring also. We put a reasonable amount on it. It's once we wound the spring up, the excess will be squeezed out and we'll wipe it off before it goes back into the movement. Slowly work your way around. Covering the surface as such. A bit more there, a bit there. Right, that'll do us for the moment. The grease aside. Clean our hands. Now get a bag marked going. The going side spring, main spring, we'll pop it into there, it's nice and clean, we'll know which is which, so we don't get the springs put in the wrong barrel. Well, we're ready to start preparing the parts to go into the ultrasonic. The first thing I do is bend a bit of wire out, join up pieces that go together, so that we can tell easily what parts go on the, probably fit in there, it may come out, we'll see, tighten it up. What parts go on the going train, what parts go on the strike train. So I use, just use a little bit of wire to tighten them up, keep them together. There can be slight differences in the one. That in there and then that guy. There can be slight differences in similar parts in the clock. And if you put it the wrong part in the wrong place it may not fit it may be tight it might throw something else out of whack so this is an easy way to determine what goes where we'll get the wheels in a moment wind them up I've already put the the nuts in a little tea strainer bag which keeps them together so they don't drop into the bottom of the ultrasonic. Now we'll do the wheels. A couple there from the going side. OK. 
to that. Bend him over. And the escape wheel. No one. Now I've got a few more pieces from the strike side, so we need a long bit of wire. Bend him in the middle. Oops. First wheel, star wheel, the wheel, and the fly. And just got him. Tie them up. Right, they're all ready to go in to the ultrasonic. I'll bring the machine over and we'll put them in and we'll let it run. I'm currently warming up the solution in the ultrasonic. And now we can start putting the parts into the basket. Front and back plates. Going side train. Pop that over there, and the pallets. And a couple of wheels. Put the nuts in there also, and the motion works. That's the motion works. Right, I put the tray into the ultrasonic. Make sure that everything is submersed. Turn it on, 23, 25 degrees. We want it to run for five minutes. So we'll turn it on and let it run. Once that's gone for the full time, we'll come back, we'll take the basket out, we'll clean the parts, wash them off with some lighter fluid, and then dry them with a, with a hair dryer on low, and we'll bring them back in so we can reassemble the movement and start to look and see which bushes require rebushing if necessary. We've got the parts back from the ultrasonic. They look like they've cleaned up pretty well. I'll put them all out here on our bench. Then we'll start to reassemble the movement. Go over there. Go there. Our nuts. And put into our tray. We'll be using them pretty soon. Motion works. Strike side. Going train. All right. Let's start to assemble the movement. One train at a time. And we'll see what rebushing we have to do. A 
scope wheel. Go there. All the nice clean parts. From the strike side. First wheel. Star wheel. Warning wheel. And the fly. Right, let's put the going train in and we'll check and see what rebushing we have to do, if at all. Wheel there and into there goes the escape wheel. Now, back plate on, that hammer post out of the road, nose and nose and nose, hold together. set we want I want and that wheel goes there there we go that's got it now Put a nut on to hold it. We don't cross thread it. Oop. Gathering pallet arbor is moved. There we go. That's back again. And these nuts are a bit of a be tight fit and they're not easy to get them started especially in a pair of gloves actually I should be in my blue gloves at the moment which I'll change over to now they're a lot easier to work with okay that feels a bit better now we can put some nuts on to hold this together the two plates one down here Done. Before we tighten them down, check, make sure that all the pivots are in place, that one's come out. It's in there. That one. That. There. And there spins freely and that one why isn't that there and put that guy up in there Okay, see what we got. Moved out a little piece, a little bit, move it up a bit. That's got him. 
Now you can see it's working. Now we can tighten it down. That one. That one. Put a nut up here. Maybe the other one fits better. Hmm, much better. Now we've checked all the all the wheels, they're all in place. We're not going to break any pivots when we tighten it down. Right, now we can have a look and see what we've got. In the way of bushings to do. Sounds alright. That seems to be alright. Then we've got over the back. Yes, yeah, so you can see this one. That one there. Now where's our scope wheel? Not easy to see that one, but there is movement there. So we'll have to do that one. seems to be all right all right well we'll do that one on the back plate of the escape wheel we'll get that rebush then we'll put it back together again check them all again and see if they mesh up properly and I've got sufficient end play and whether there's another bush we have to do or not. But they do look pretty good. Well, they should be. It's a Ergos. It's a quality, quality movement. They were never rubbish. So we'll see how we go. Upside down again. Take the back plate off carefully. That one out. that one right upside down in there so it's ready put that out of the road right let's get a move on that's a bush there that needs to be rebushed I've marked it with a, a black felt tip pen so we can see which it is first thing we do we'll put it into the machine the bushing machine and there it is in the middle now we'll hold that down so it doesn't move see if the other side fits no we got the back cock on it won't fit all right not a problem we'll hold the plate as we drill check it once again that's in the center of the hole Remove that. Now, new page. Now 
get our vernier out. We need to find the diameter of that pivot there. Close it up and it's 0 0.80 mil. So we'll jot that down. Eight seven mil. That away. Now we're going to add a box of bushes. <clears throat> we'll have a look and see which is the nearest size bush. So the internal diameter has to be 0.87 or very close to that. And number 40 is 0.85. So we'll take out a, uh, a number 40 version bush and check it on the pivot. Number 40 is one of those. Little list to put it in so we don't drop it when we're finished. As usual, put it in the palm of our hand and try to insert the pivot into it and it fits in. So it means it is too big. We we'll need a smaller one. So back we go. Put the number 40 back into the box. 40, we'll get a 39, which is 0.75. We'll try that one. Right, we'll try it down here. Won't fit in. Pivot won't fit into the hole, so that's the one that we'll use. And number 39. So we'll jot that down. Number 39 bush. Then we need to put down the rest of the dimensions. Number 39. The maximum diameter of that is 2.00. That's the rima we will have to use to fit this bush in. So there's our data. Number 39 version bush. <laughs> diameter of the pivot 0.87 mil. And 2mm is the final size hole that the bushing will fit. So we go over to our reamers. And 2 is the final. 245. 1.97, that is the one we'll finish up with. So we'll start off with this little guy down here. 1.20. Pop that into the bushing machine. Using the smaller reamer initially and then going up to the final size reduces the stress on these very, very fine reamers. They break very easily. So we'll very carefully turn it round, putting very light pressure on it. Lift it up. Take away the, the brass that we've cut out. Very slowly, because these things wind up into a corkscrew very easily. And at 50 plus dollars per each, you don't want to break them too often. Up 
Okay, we're finished with that size. We'll take that out. Put it back. 2 mil is the final size. We've got a 1.97 mil here. Put that into the machine. Then rim out the hole once again with light pressure, turning it round, stopping occasionally to remove the brass that we've cut out. Starting to cut into it now. Right, final size. Remove the rim up. And, and put that piece in. I don't even know what it's called. Sort of a hammer, really. Because that's what we're going to do with it. Right, now we get the our bushing. Turn it up the white way. Put it over the hole. Making sure that the oil sink is pointing to the outside of the plate, line it up, give it a light tap with a hammer to make sure it's seated properly, then a couple of quick taps, rub your finger over it, you'll feel that it's smooth, there's no raised portion on it, so undo the clamp, remove it out, and that's the replace bushing. That one there. We have to broach it out to the correct size, which we're going to do now. We have to broach it out to the correct size, which we're going to do now. Move that back a little bit. Maybe to there. Now we have to find a brooch that fits that hole that's a tiny bit larger than that hole. Too big, we need a smaller one. Mm, that's a small one, I think. Try it in the hole. It come out the other side just it just fits so that's the one that we need we'll put the rest of the brooches aside for the moment remove our cutting brooch and put it inside a pin vise put the square end in so it's centered, then tighten it down. Now before we start, we'll check and make sure that, that the pivot doesn't fit into the bush, which it doesn't. Right, so 
we'll start using the cutting brooch. Now to use a cutting brooch you have to align the brooch at 90 degrees to each of these faces so it has to be perpendicular when you see it like that. If you put it off to one side you're going to cut a hole at an angle and the wheel is going to flop around inside it and it won't run smoothly. So before you start line up the cutting broach C. You can use the, the posts as references if you like and very slowly start to turn the brooch very slowly because they're very sharp and, and one or two turns on it is sufficient to make the hole too big and you've got to start again. Test it as you go along. Pivot's not fitting. We want a little bit more. Align it, make sure it's square. <laughs> Almost fitting, a tiny bit more. This by its very nature has to be a very slow, deliberate movement because it's very easy to make that hole too big you've got to start off all over again mm, almost tiny bit more check the angles Withdraw it. There we go, it's sitting in there. Now before we adjust that to see whether we open it a little bit further, it feels a tiny bit tight but we will put it between the plates first. The escape wheel in there. Line up the hammer post, get it out of the road. Put the bottom plate back on again. Line up some wheels. Over a tiny little bit. Here we go. In the gathering pallet, we'll put the hammer post in. And there we have it. Nope, the gathering pallet arbor has come out again. Try it again. You can see it's a little bit tight. It's not spinning freely like this one. So we'll take it apart. And broach it out a little bit more. Get an alignment. Now it's cutting, reverse it out, back 
back into the front plate. Back plate on top again. A bit of an angle, thank you. Okay, very gently. That one. Our scope wheel. The gathering pallet. Scope wheel is almost there. there, up fraction, you can hear it click as it drops in, gathering pallet, now you can see the wheel spinning freely, we'll now check it for end play and rock it backwards and forwards you can see sufficient end play there and it spins freely so that is now done I'll now put it all back together again that train check make sure that the other wheels are right and then we'll come back and go to the next step. Okay, let's start to put the movement back together again. We'll start off with the going train. Put the main spring in. Then the next wheel. In there, now the strike side, get in there. Star wheel, strike wheel, I think we might put that in first, it goes, in there, then the wheel back in again, Now the warning wheel, got the pin on it there, goes in there and the fly will go into there. we have it set up now the hammer post has to fit in there and that spring 
wraps around that. So we'll very carefully bring that down. Back plate needs to drop down a little bit more. Now we start putting the, the pivots in and getting them aligned. back a little bit. Got him. He clicked in. We'll put the spring on that later. Get the lifting cam set. Tighter there. The one lifting camp. They all turn now. Tighten that nut a little bit. Put the fly back in again. Round. Open the plate slightly. It's got the fly in. Tight nut, nut. Nut, oh, that's tight. Loosen that nut, check them all again. So it's right off, tighten that nut down. Check all these pivots. Make sure they're centered. Scope well. Got him. back a little bit and the fly get that almost into the right now let's drop out doesn't matter pop back in again tighten that up tighten the nuts See what we got here. It's turning. The 
going side train. Now look at the strike side train. Right, put up. Put another nut on there to hold that. Yeah, it's got him. Tighten them down a little bit. Not too much, just to hold them in place. See. Pull it out the bottom. Okay, now. Cannon arbor turning there. The strike side work in the hammer. I'll lift this spring up, put it over onto the hammer, that's right, We'll get this set up over the escape wheel. That's got him. Right down. Actually, before I put the back cock on, which is what this piece here is called. I'll remove I'll remove the broken suspension spring. It's been pushed in pretty tightly. That's got him. Take that out. Replace that later. Put the back cock on. Oops. Couple of screws in. We'll get that adjusted properly once the movement is all together. At the moment we just want to get it in and hold it in place. First screw. And the second one. Come up a tiny bit so that that can run. We'll adjust that properly later.
just about there. Right. Now we'll start putting the rest of the parts on. First we'll start off by putting on the ratchet wheels. Going side first. Flip the click round. The ratchet wheel on. screwdriver, pull the click back against the spring, let the ratchet wheel settle down. There we go. Now, get the screw ready. There we have it. That goes over there to hold the ratchet wheel in place. Screw that in, down partially, remove it. The screwdriver, you don't ever tighten down the screw. It's simply used to hold the screw. As you can see when I close that, the two pieces slide together and it holds the screw in place. Once it's right, we then tighten it down with the screwdriver. Okay. Now we'll do the strike side. Flip the click round. Put the ratchet wheel on, pull the click back, push the, that, push the ratchet wheel down, so pull the click back, push the ratchet down, here we go, it's all the way down now, get the screw, throw on our driver, Push it together. Then insert the screw into the hole, twist it down a little bit. Then complete with a screwdriver. Okay. Both on and tight now. Move these couple of boxes out of the road. Now we can start putting on the other pieces on the front. Attachments for that. Very good. Got the rack. Goes up the top. That goes here right. So pull the click back, push the ratchet down. Here we go all the way down now, get the screw, draw on our driver, push it together, then insert the screw into the hole, twist it down a little bit.
then complete with a screwdriver. Okay. Both on and tight now. Move these couple of boxes out of the road. Now we can start putting on the other pieces on the front. Attachments for that. There you go. Got the rack. The top. Now we're ready to put on the rack and snail. That wheel on there first. Then we'll put the snail on. And then the rack. Just adjusting we're one tooth out. Right, I think that's got it. Once we've set up the pendulum, we'll then come back and readjust all this. In the meantime, We'll put a clip once I've flattened it out again. We'll pop this on the rack. It on and the last one on top of this wheel here if I can if I can get it okay it goes there We can squeeze that in a little bit. Getting there slowly but surely. Tiny bit more. And it jumped out. Great. I'll take that off. Let you sit there all right. If it doesn't, we'll replace it.
That's got him. Right. There you go. That's a rack and snail set up in the front of the clock. The next section we'll set up the we'll set up the pendulum. We have to get a new suspension spring, which we've got in stock. That's the old one, not looking much chop. We'll replace that. We'll get a leader that runs down. I'll get out a an adjustable bob with a rating nut on it, and then I'll show you how to set that up. Today we're going to cut a pendulum rod to the approximate size, then hang a, a rated bob on it, then we'll oil the movement and put it on a test stand so we can start to calibrate the correct length of the pendulum. And this movement here, you will see it's got PL13CM. That means the pendulum length is 13 centimetres. Now, how does one accurately and correctly work out the 13 centimetres from where to where? Right, that's our suspension spring that we're going to use. Put it there. That's our, our bob with a rating nut on the bottom that we can turn up and down that effectively lengthens or shortens the pendulum rod now we want a hundred we want 130 mil well, 130 mil i have to change it round if you can't see it there that might be better there Point it on, that'll look. Now, we'll work out the approximate length because the 13 centimetres noted on there is the theoretical length of the pendulum. But depending on the time of the year and how hot and cold and various other bits and pieces, how long since the movement has been serviced, how long since it's been oiled, will all take, will all come into play when adjusting the, the final length of the pendulum. But we have to know where to start first. So that little hole up there that you can see, just there, goes through that part on the back cock and it has a tapered pin pushed into it and the center of that hole I'll just move this rule down a tiny bit to there is where you start counting the 13 centimeters from and there's 130 mil there now the second thing we have to take into account when doing this is it a pendulum length? Turn that round a bit. I'm losing it there. Is that the pendulum length is measured to halfway through the bob. Not the top, the bottom, the rating nut, or the bottom of the rating pin, but halfway through the bob, which is there. So we'll move the bob up a little bit. That's 13 centimetres there and that is about the starting point to cut the rod now I'll put a little mark on the rod there this is where we're going to bend it that that we're not going to cut it there we're going to cut it a little bit longer so it bends and we'll bend it up you'll also notice on the bob I have wound the rating nut to about the middle of the screwed section. 
so it can go up a bit over half an inch and come down a bit over half an inch and that's what we'll use to get the correct measurement at my bench over the next couple of days on this movement at the beginning of summer in Australia so that's how we'll do it right we've marked that where that is the 13 centimeters I'll take a round nose pair of pliers being one of those put it on the the mark we made and then start to bend bit there and I'll bend that take that a bit smaller I'll bend that back straighten that up level it back with that not quite a bit more And that's what we've set up with. That's what we're finished with. So from the center of that little hole there on the suspension spring, the pendulum will hang there. It'll then drop down half the length to the center of the bob. So what we'll do now is we'll cut that off, cut it off and smooth it off with a file. We'll close that gap up a little bit more so the bob doesn't have that far to swing. You see that's a lot bigger than the thickness of the brass. So we'll tighten that up a little bit. Once again using our round nose pliers. Pull that in a bit tighter. Make sure the bob can fit. Okay. Now, those the rough ends where I just cut it, I'll now put a file over that to smooth that down. And then I'll come back and then we'll connect it into the movement and see how we go. Right, the suspension rod is finished. I've rounded the end off it. We'll put those aside for the moment. We'll oil the movement. Then we'll put it on a test stand. We're going to drop on each of the pivots. Two on the winding arbors. Pivot there. That one. Fly warning wheel in the backpack for the pallets and I think that's about it for the back. Right, we'll turn it over and do the front. Then we'll put the hammer on. Then we can start testing it. Whoop, we spilt the oil.
back to oiling all the pivots. On the rack, oil's getting a bit low, I'll put a bit more oil in. This is the oil we're using, Mobius, D5 slash 20 mil of it. Good quality Swiss made clock oil. Right, back to our oiling. There, that one, spin him round. I think I wiped that off with my finger. Yep, I did. Found a bit more. On there. On the fly. Over there, and then I'll get that one. Second wheel, so that'll be done. Star wheel, and down the cannon arbor. We'll put two on that. We'll put one each on the face of the click. And two down the winding arbor. And there. Down there. Right, that should be about it. Now we'll put the movement on a test stand and put it all together. We can start timing it. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about antique and vintage clock repair, be sure to hit the subscribe button before watching these next two videos.